All right, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of SideQuest Podcast. Listen in and level up. I have a great episode for you today, but first, as always, let's get through the show notes. If you're not following the Facebook page, head over to Facebook, type SideQuest Fitness into the search bar and like the page. There, you're going to get updates on podcast episodes, articles when they get posted, and you're going to get a brand new taco recipe every Tuesday for Taco Camp. Uh, plus lots of other shenanigans and nerd talk throughout the week. So make sure you head over to Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is SideQuestFM. If you want to see some cool videos and random stuff on Instagram as well, you can follow me on Instagram, same handle, SideQuestFM, or follow me on Snapchat, SideQuestFit. Follow me there. Send me your questions. Uh, I want to get all the questions from you, help you as much as I can on your fitness journey or your journey in life, whatever it may be. But head over to Snapchat, SideQuest Fit, follow me there. You get a little more personal, in-depth look at the shenanigans I get into throughout uh, every day. Uh, But I do love getting questions from the community, so please send them out to me. If you have not left a review for the podcast, please head over to iTunes. If you're not listening on iTunes and you listen on SoundCloud or Stitcher, leave a review there as well. When you leave reviews, it helps me move up the charts on the iTunes store so that more people can see and hear the amazing guests that I've had on and have on each and every single week. So make sure you head over there. And don't forget, if you haven't picked up your copy of The Seven Principles of Fat Loss, head over to sidequestfitness.com forward slash seven principles, and you can pick up your copy of The Seven Principles of Fat Loss. These are the same seven principles I follow each and every day and teach my clients to help them shred away more body fat, unlock heroic strength, and just look better naked. So if you want to unlock strength or just look better naked in the mirror, head over again, grab those seven principles of fat loss, and start following those today. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. So over the last few months, you have heard me talking about my online clients, and you've heard from a few of my online clients as well about what they've done Uh, on their fitness quest with me. With summer heading in, I am taking a few more clients on to help people get ready for summer, help you get ready for uh, bikini season or swimsuit season, or maybe this is your first time. Maybe you've decided that that's it. You want to get in shape and you need someone to help you with your journey on your journey. You need a Gandalf uh, and a Samwise to guide you as you head into Frodo. And I am your Gandalf and Samwise all packed in to one. I am taking on a few more clients. If you are interested, head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and check out the page. You can apply there. You can find out more about what coaching entails and also see some of the amazing transformations that my clients have had while working with me. So head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and apply today. What's up, guys? I have a great show for you today, The Return of Coach's Corner. I took a a one-month hiatus from it, uh, just mostly due to scheduling, uh, and had some awesome guests lined up anyways. But this time, I welcome back a couple of my fellow nerds and geeks who also do some fitness podcasts and do things to help other uh, other people of our ilk continue to improve their life uh, and, and be more awesome. And today, we are going to talk about habits. We're going to talk about how looking at the world through the prism of being a nerd uh, has helped us accomplish things in fitness, in life, in whatever. So I really think you're going to love this Coach's Corner. But more importantly, we hop in to 20 minutes of nerding out in the DLC episode that you've got to check out. We nerd out on all things Westworld And it's awesome. You've got to head over to sidequestfitness.com slash DLC and subscribe so that you can listen to those extra 20 minutes of me and Chez and Kenneth talking about our love of Westworld. It's free, DLC, completely free, but it's an added thing I want to bring to you guys. If you don't want it, fine. You don't have to get DLC, but I'm not EA. I'm not Ubisoft. I ain't selling shit. I'm giving it to you for absolutely the cost of nothing. Except for maybe like a hug someday. Maybe we'll like hug each other. That'd be awesome because you can be like, cool, hug, boom, I'll take hugs. But head over, sidequestfitness.com slash DLC, put your email in there, and you're going to get the link directly to the super secret page where all of it goes down. But you got to head over to sidequestfitness.com slash DLC 
and get the DLC episode. So you can listen to us, Nerd Out on Westworld, and then you can let us know on social media what you thought about the show. All right, let's get into it. Step up and you gotta get it fitness. Host Rob at the moment and the quest is you gotta check in and wreck it. You're breaking personal records and with the help of the guests you won't be guessing on the lessons. That's a plus five fears. Got a low key bam right here. You want to meet him, there's no better way to greet him than to strike a boss pose. Take a look into the mirror. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I have a great show for you today. It, uh, I took a little month hiatus from Coach's Corner. Uh, I'll bring it back. Uh, things are kind of hectic in my life right now. I have a, a new adventure I'm going to be going on soon uh, as well. Uh, but I'm bringing back some of the best uh, nerdtastic guests that I've had. Uh, and trust me, the DLC for this episode, you need to listen to. It is going to be awesome. So make sure to head over to sidequestfitness.com slash DLC. Subscribe and get it. It's absolutely free. I am not EA. I'm not Ubisoft. I'm not asking you to pay for a season pass and then give you a bunch of bullshit DLC that doesn't really matter because we just give you some character skins and some gun, gun camo or whatever whatever other maps. No, it's all free. 10 to 15 minutes of extra content with my guest every single week. Pick it up, sidequestfitness.com slash DLC. But I'm welcoming, welcoming back Chess Hall and Ken Rotter uh, of Dumbbells and Dragons. Guys, welcome back to the show. Excellent. Thanks for having me back, Robbie. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Chez, you just launched your uh, your podcast uh, over on – okay, I don't remember the name of it uh, off the top <laughs> of my head. Uh, what, plus 7 Intelligence? Yeah. Yes, Plus 7 Intelligence. Um, so it's not quite official launch. Um, I just put together kind of a proof of concept episode, and I'm passing that around and uh, trying to get some feedback, and uh, hopefully the official launch will be uh, in a couple months. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, well, I will make sure to, to tweet that and, and share it once you, once you get it going. I will tell anyone uh, who is like, I want to start a podcast. Um, number one, uh, if you're going to start a podcast, have a really good idea of what you want to do and make sure there's a niche for it first. Secondly, uh, record like 10 episodes, like if you can, like just record 10 in a day and just put them up uh, because it, it's a real struggle and a hustle to be like, I'm going to record an episode. Oh, shit, I have to have a second episode and then try and find a guest or do a second one. So if you're going to do it, spend like a day or two and record a bunch of stuff and then upload all of it at once. Uh, see what the feedback is and then you can go from there. Uh because <laughs> it's a it, Ken. I'm sure you can you can say it is a it is a grind. It it absolutely is. Um, you have your your busy times and your slow times. And the one thing I was determined to do when I launched my podcast is I knew I wanted to launch with at least three actual episodes and then an intro episode, just so. I would give people a reason to hit the subscribe button because if they just see one episode, they're like, Oh, is this a one and done thing? Yeah. And then the other thing is consistency, consistency, consistency. Um, everyone knows my podcast goes up same time, same day, every week. Uh, I haven't had any off weeks yet. Hopefully I won't, but that's why I have days like this where I am recording four podcast episodes today and then two or three tomorrow. So my podcast is going to be scheduled out until the end of April. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I, I realized it's so much easier to record someone and then be like, I'm talking to you in, to you in January. Your episode goes up in March because <laughs> it's, 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 if I, if I don't, I will slack and be like, Oh shit! I don't have anyone on my podcast for uh, next week. Um, who can I get on at the last minute? Well, you know you can always hit me up, and I will work with the schedules and be your last minute go to guy, bro. <laughs> always, man, always. Um, so we we got on. Uh, it was we were going to have Mike Sweetman on as well, and uh, of the Force Within, and his episode is coming up soon on the podcast, and and. Uh, uh, BJ Keaton of Geek Fitness was going to join us as well, and they had some things come up and, and couldn't hop on with us. But we're going to talk about sort of some extreme things we've done either in fitness or our life 
uh, where we, as being the the fans of, of comic books and superheroes and video games, have sort of found strength in those or used those uh, as avenues to help us succeed in our goal. Ken, you have a crazy, crazy uh, few days coming up. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about what your nine days uh, involves. Well, starting the day after St. Patrick's Day, so March 18th, I am running four Tough Mudders in nine days. I'm going to be in New Orleans, and I'm running Saturday, Sunday in New Orleans, and then the very next weekend, uh, fly back to L.A., and then I run Saturday, Sunday in L.A. Uh, So it's going to – I've never – attempted to do four. I think my, my having the most close together was I did three over four weeks and that was a couple years ago. So needless to say, I've been hitting up all cardio at the gym lately. <laughs> I was going to say what your training looked like lately. Uh, bad. Um, <laughs> No, I just, I've never been a runner and so it's, it's going to be interesting to do, but also like to practice that you really need like to practice a 10 mile run. I need time to go run six, seven, eight miles. Right. And for me, that's a solid hour. Well, not a solid hour. It's like a solid two hours, maybe two and a half. Cause I'm not a fast runner. Uh, and I just don't have that time to go out and run six to seven miles. So we, you know, people are like, well, how are you going to do it? And I'm like, well, I'm going to put one foot in front of the other <laughs> and eventually I'll finish. <laughs> Now the tough, but the tough motor is a little bit different than running on the treadmill. I mean, you, you, your your topography changes a little bit. You've got hills and declines, and you have I don't know giant puddles of mud to run through. How's that? How do you train for those obstacles? Um, that I <laughs> you just, you just most, roll the dice. You just roll the dice, <laughs> and you hope that it, that 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 one day is is okay, and your body gets through it. No, I've, I've never really had an issue with some of the obstacles because some are – some you can't fail at. Some are like you jump off a platform into – you know, it's an older obstacle. It's not there anymore, but you jump 15 feet into a giant pool of water. Right. Like that you're not going to fail that obstacle because – you just, you fall. Gravity does the work. <laughs> um, um, but some of the ones like they have some new monkey bar obstacles where you go up an incline monkey bar and then you swing to a pole and you have to shimmy down the pole. Uh, that it's just mostly upper body. So to train for that, um, you just, just weight training and pull-ups, chin-ups, burpees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And are, you, are you going to like the, the park and, and hopping on some monkey bars and like doing a pull up and then trying to jump to like a monkey bar? And because uh, like grip, like the grip thing is one thing you don't think about because like you're jumping from those like Ninja Warrior. Like you see those things. You're like, oh, come on, man. It can't be that hard. And then you're like, wait a minute. I have to like take all my my hands have to catch my entire body weight and grip around this like small bar. It's. I've never actually had a problem with monkey bars. I think it's always just because I've been a somewhat, you know, spider monkey type person. Yeah. I can. So, so honestly, you, it's you just said spider monkey. And I immediately just like imagined you drinking Mountain Dew and be like, I'm going to drink Mountain Dew. Come at you like a spider monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that I, that's pretty much me, except I don't drink Mountain Dew. <laughs> no, it's, it's, Honestly, a big part of it is I will just do uh, burpees but add a pull-up. So when I jump, I jump to the pull-up bar, pull myself up, and then uh, drop. And so that kind of gets you used to – gets you used to the feeling. And the key to monkey bars is just keep your elbows bent. 
keep everything tight, stay up high, don't let your arms lock out. Yeah. Gotcha. There gotcha. you go. Advice for everybody. <laughs> um, so when did you sort of fall in love with, with Tough Mutters? Oh, man. Okay. So in 2011, I wanted to do a Tough Mudder. And one was coming up and I was like, okay, I'm going to train for it and I'll do it next year. 2012 came by. I hadn't trained for it. Okay, I'm going to train. I'm going to do it next year. So finally, 2013, about three weeks before the Arizona Tough Mudder, I texted my buddy and I was like, look, let's just sign up. Obviously, we're not going to train. Um, but if we don't sign up now, we're never going to do it. So we signed up and we trained so insanely hard for that first Tough Mudder um, because it's you don't train, then sign up. You sign up and that gets you to train. Right. That's the motivation that makes it real. So that February 2013 is well is when I fell in love. And then I started mostly it was just for me because I enjoyed doing it and I invited friends to do it and we had a great time. And then I've done 17 so far. And so these, this upcoming four is going to be 18 through 21. Yeah. Yeah. I had to count on my fingers. People don't judge. (laughs) (laughs) That's what they're there for. Duh. Right. No, but one of the things that I fell in love with was it's not competitive. And I brought a couple of my friends who were not in any shape whatsoever, like 250 plus pounds. And they did it. They didn't do it fast. They didn't complete every obstacle like, you know, but they attempted every obstacle. Right. And they crossed the finish line. And the day after Tough Mudder, one of my friends who had struggled with disordered eating uh, texted me and she's like, I had so much fun. Like, this has changed my life. Thank you so much. And people are always like, why are you always posting about your Tough Mudders? Blah, 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 blah. But I've gotten far more your photos, your status updates, your this, your that has inspired me. Yeah. Way more than I've gotten the negative feedback. Yeah. And so that's kind of what drives me to do to do each and every one. And I've I've just met some amazing people. Um you'll nobody in a tough mutter is in a bad mood, is an angry person, is they're just all about succeeding and helping you succeed. Right. Yeah. All right. So how, so, how have you, since this is sort of the crux of, of the, the, the podcast episode, uh, while training for those things and while going through that, uh, did you take something from the world of, of comics or, or, or heroes or whatever, like to inspire you and push you? Um, yes. You know, I've always been Spider-Man is my favorite superhero of all time. And so anything where I get to go and kind of pretend to be (laughs) Spider-Man and climb things (laughs) and climb things and jump over things and just is a blast for me. But it's also that it reminds me that I am in. I'm in better shape than I think, and I'm in better shape than some other people. And so as other people helped me, I need to help them. It's the with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And I have a responsibility to other people, tough mutterers and non-tough mutter people to help them achieve whatever goal they set for themselves. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, I think that that's something that, you know, um, people sort of ask me all the time, like why I count calories every day, why I keep track of this, why I do that. I'm like, well, if, and honestly, it goes back to that quote with great power comes great responsibility. And if I'm going to have the power to tell someone, this is what you need to do to achieve your goals. Isn't it my responsibility to do the same? 
Absolutely. Um, so I, that's that man. It's so, it's so interesting how that phrase always gets, it's like the one thing they got wrote in a Marvel comic book and like, it's just permeated throughout culture, uh, in more ways than one. Um, Chez, how have you, what have you done that's been, you know, extreme? I know you, you're not running four Tough mutters in nine days, um, but, you know, in, in your life and in your, your quest for, for better health and, uh, and whatnot, like, what have, what have you done that's been a little bit extreme that maybe someone might not know about? Yeah, well, you know, like you said, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not a big fitness guy. Fitness is probably something I'm, I'm pretty weak on and I'm, I'm really starting to focus on that more. But, uh, you know, for me, kind of a similar, you know, struggle to find, you know, discipline has been, you know, a real mental struggle for, you know, basically like my whole life, uh, strategy, you know, I spent, uh, a lot of my life kind of coasting on some natural talent and, uh, and, uh, kind of a social safety net. And, you know, I would put in some effort, but I never, uh, for years, I never put a hundred percent in almost anything. Uh, I didn't put a hundred percent. And then, now my like you know my struggle is kind of how do you transition from years and years of habits of you know not putting in the work not hustling you know and trying to change into a person that is better and stronger when you know I don't technically have to do it but it's something that I want to do it's finding that motivation to you know, rise up and go from someone who's, you know, kind of coasting through life to someone who's making things and helping people. Um, you know, I always think of, um, if anyone has read the Hobbit, uh, you know, and, you know, ignore the movies. If you read the book, uh, it's always about, uh, what's going on in Bilbo's mind is he's always thinking, you know, I have a nice home back home. I don't need to be on this adventure. I can quit at any time. I can go and I can rest and, you know, be comfortable with all the things that are familiar. And that's like the struggle for uh, a large portion of his story. And, you know, I really resonate with that because, you know, every day it's, you know, I can go and I can just play games or I can go and just binge Netflix that is always available to me. Um, but you know, I need to work on, uh, I've been working on, you know, resetting my habits and resetting my life to say, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on, you know, I'm going to make something new that no one has ever made before. I'm going to be, you know, creative. I'm going to put in a hundred percent, um, you know, I'm not going to accept my default position and I'm not going to, you know, make excuses like, oh, well, most people, they put in this much effort and they're fine. So that's how much I can put in. Um, so, you know, for, um, you know, I don't know if like for me, that's kind of extreme is like breaking out, breaking out of my habits and and changing who I am as a person. And, uh, you know, I hope that, uh, that that work pays off. I like you said my default position. Uh, you know, I don't want to be default. I want to reset things. Um, what are the steps that you're taking to, to reset that? Um, because that's a very, it's a very, you know, the, the words you use are, are very game oriented. And I know in our conversation, um, which if you haven't heard the podcast with Chez on the show, please head over to iTunes and find that. Uh, it's a great, great episode, and I'll have it linked in the show notes for this episode as well. Um, but how how do you do that? Like, what are what are the steps you take? Because it's very easy for us to be like in the old school, not nowadays. Nowadays, you just get pissed off and turn your Xbox off, and you're like, "Man, fuck you, Call of Duty! I'm out of here! You stupid eight year old kids teabagging me in Halo! I'm done." In the old day, you just hit reset. <laughs> you know, you just hit reset. Very easy. You use your finger and hit it. But when you talk about resetting your habits, that actually involves a lot more work than just hitting a button. So how have you done that? 
Yeah, it's, you know, uh, there are a couple of, you know, uh, you know, there's some simple things like just, you know, trying to keep track of things better, like being organized allows you to see the patterns and allows you to recognize, you know, hey, I said I was going to do this thing months ago and I never did it. Um, you know, so staying organized will, you know, kind of forces forces me to, you know, come to terms with my own feelings and how, you know, how I need to improve. And also it's kind of just recognizing, you know, recognizing the kind of the, the good feelings to follow and then the bad feelings to follow. So one thing I like to say is inside of everyone, there's, there's a moron, right? There's someone who, who makes <laughs> inside of everyone. There's no moron inside of me whatsoever. 90%. Oh, I mean this with complete offense to both of you and everyone listening. Um, <laughs> No, within everyone, there's, you know, there's a drive to make decisions for bad reasons Mm -hmm. that everyone makes, like, they'll make bad decisions when they're tired, or uh, they'll make decisions based on, oh, well, this is what everyone else does, or that moron will make decisions um, for, like, really just bizarre reasons And, you know, you can go deep into the psychology of why, you know, we have biases and make bad decisions. But really, it just boils down to that there's a little moron inside of us that wants to control what we do. And, you know, kind of, uh, you know, finding those moments that I'm making a decision for the wrong reason, you know, making a decision to, to go get fast food when, you know, I don't really have a reason to, it's just what I feel like in that moment. Um, you know, that's a bad decision. That's just me switching to autopilot and and doing that instead of, you know, taking a few extra minutes and cooking something myself that's going to save me, uh, money and it's going to be better for me. You know, it's, it's about, you know, being cognizant of why you're making decisions you know, is it because it's just comfortable or is it because it's a good decision? And, you know, it takes uh, it takes time to kind of break those down. You know, I'm still finding stuff every day that, it, you know, I realize that my habit, uh, it's it's just because I want to, uh, you know, like my my office will be just a total wreck. And, you know, the house will be disorganized and it'll stay that way for a while. And then I'll make excuses for why it's that case. Um, But in reality, it's just me wanting to make excuses, wanting to switch back an autopilot so that I don't have to feel guilty about, you know, playing games or whatever, uh, watching TV, stuff like that. So it's a process of, you know, every time you recognize you're making a decision for the wrong reason, you switch course and uh, and you you find something else that's that's better. And that's similar to another realization that I made is uh, with procrastination, um, a lot of times you'll just with autopilot, you'll just you won't even make a decision. you'll just automatically go start doing something. But you know in reality, you need to break it down and say, okay, I'm in the next hour. I have options. I can go and I can work on my, my project and it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to take some time or I can go play, play a game or I can go, you know, whatever it is, rewatch how I met your mother for the third time. Um, (laughs) and breaking it down and actually forcing yourself and saying, this is a decision I'm making. This is something that I'm not going to allow myself to go autopilot on, you know, just, actually forcing yourself to, you know, proclaim to yourself, I am spending my time in one way, or I'm going to spend it in another way. And I'm going to make a decision between those two. I'm not going to let my autopilot make a decision. Um, That alone helps to kind of break those cycles. And it takes time, it takes mental effort. And a lot of if I'm tired, I don't want to do that. But that's what it's going to take to to make improvements. Um, you know, so, you know, 
I think all of those combines and, you know, that being a daily process and something that's probably, it's taken years and it's probably going to take more years. Um, I think it's going to, uh, produce even better results. So I want to kind of segue a little bit into, to habits. I like this idea that, that you've, you've brought up Chaz. Um, because I think that is one thing that people like James Clear, uh, former guest on the show, very long time ago, uh, has talked about a lot in his writings, um, is, you know, creating habits and that changing your habits is, is how you, how you change yourself. Um, and I think that's the biggest hang up a lot of people have with fitness and especially nutrition. Nutrition is like, most people don't mind the workouts. It's the whole like, oh my God, I can't go out and drink with my friends on the weekend if like I'm doing this diet. I can't do this. I can't do that. And like it, you have to, ch- like the thing is, is like if you want to change, like if you don't like where you are, you have to change some part of yourself, like hands down, like mm-hmm. you, you can't really drink a six pack every night and have abs and not live off of tilapia and chicken breast, like, you know, and then go to the gym and have shitty workouts. Like you can do it if you want, but it's not feasible really. Um, like you, you, you have to change some part of you has to change to become this, this new person. So how, let's talk about just everyone's habits here. Um, Ken, what are your habits like to get your day started? Like, how do you, how do you start your morning? What, what are those habits? Well, um, I am a morning workout person. So I find it easiest to work out in the morning just because my gym is less crowded and there's less mm, gym lookers like the people at the gym who just kind of go there to meet members of the opposite sex or to look at everybody else. Right. Um, so first thing I do is I get up at four o'clock in the morning. So I have, I have found that I am more likely to get to the gym if I have my gym clothes laid out. Okay. And so that's, that's one of my first habits is because it's so much easier for me to get up, grab this pile of clothes that I've set out for the morning and then go change. Uh, mostly because I also have, I'm sleeping next to my wife and I don't want to wake her up while I'm shuffling through drawers. Touche. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I go downstairs. I make myself a protein shake. Uh, normally I will try to accompany that with a banana or a granny Smith apple. And then I'll take a pre-workout. And that's one of my, those are my morning habits. And just don't get me wrong. I've had the days where I've done all of that, even had the pre-workout. And then I've gone right back upstairs undressed and gone right back to sleep. (laughs) Um, But as opposed to when I would just get up, start trying to look for my clothes. If I couldn't find like a shirt I wanted to wear, I would just crawl back into bed. If I, you know, I would have my shoes and socks already laid out. And if I already had my shoes on, I put my shoes on um, almost immediately when I get downstairs, because then I'm less likely to take them off and go back upstairs. Right. Uh, I think is, is, is that kind of what you were going for with habits? Yeah, just like how do you how do you get your day started? Because one of the biggest things that a lot of people talk about, and I know there was a uh, he gave the commencement address at uh, Navy or some military school, uh, and he was like, you know, the the number one thing you do is make your bed. Now, granted, I can't make my bed because my wife is still in it for at least two and a half hours, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm not waking her up yeah. at five in the morning. That's not happening. It's not happening. Yeah, it's not happening. Well. I I can't make my bed because as soon as I get out of my bed, uh, my 50 pound pit bull goes immediately to where (laughs) I was sleeping. (laughs) So even if your wife, even if your wife is gone, you get up and the pit bull is like, no, I'm good in bed. Yeah. And so it's like, she's just on the covers. So I can't really pull them up to make them. (laughs) Um, So it's like, all right, I, you're keeping it warm for me until I get back, you know, after work tonight. Thanks. Thanks, Coco. (laughs) Um, Yeah. But like, you know, how, how you start your morning. So Chess, I'll, I'll, I'll throw mine in real quick. I think some of my listeners Mm -hmm. know 
Some, if you're new, you may not. Um, my main thing in the morning, I do not keep a phone in the bedroom. The bedroom is for two things, fucking and sleeping. That's it. No, no food, no TV, no electronics in the bedroom, except for my wife, because somehow she got that. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I'm with I, you. I, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to have this argument. Cause like I, like it, I can see in your eyes I'm not winning this argument. So I well, don't have an electronic in my bedroom. Um, so, but then I I leave it out in the kitchen so that when the alarm goes off, I have to get up and turn it off. There's no rolling over and hitting snooze. There's no laying in bed to look at Facebook. Like I have to get up. I have to get up. It just so happens that it sits beside my coffee maker. And my coffee is already made because there's a timer on it. Oh, thank you, technology. <laughs> Um, and then as soon as I turn the alarm off, I turn my phone off, completely off, so that I do not look at anything. Pour my coffee, and I start reading. I read for an hour, and then uh, I usually make my oatmeal, and then I start work. I start working on something for about an hour to an hour and a half that I'm really focused on for the day. Then at 8, I go to the gym, do my workout, come back, do email client stuff, uh, and then continue working. Um but if I got up and looked at my phone, I wouldn't start reading until maybe 5.30. I wouldn't get anything done. Um, so phone outside, get the coffee, start reading, and then I can start my day. And if I'm reading, a lot of times I have ideas that percolate while I'm reading. Um, so, Chaz, what are your – and maybe it's not morning habits. I know you know uh, your life is a little bit different than ours. But even if it's a habit to get you into something that, that you're doing, like your, your new endeavor, what are the habits you do or have built – to, to start that work. Yeah, I used to be, uh, my morning habits used to be awful. Um, basically, uh, I, I would take forever to get out of bed. Uh, if I ever did, you know, if there was anything I could skip in the morning, I would skip it. Um, and slowly I kind of built up a, a slightly better system. Um, one of the most important things for a morning routine is your nightly routine is making sure you go to bed at a consistent time, leaving yourself plenty of time. Um, but, uh, so I've made some general progress and I'm going to throw in something that's kind of totally opposite of what you guys are doing, but, uh, it's weirdly worked for me this past week. Um, so basically I've been having, a difficulty with getting to work on time um, because in the morning I have to get the kids ready. I have to get them uh, going. And, you know, I was having, for some reason, no matter how early I got up, I would still end up late for work. And it's because in the morning I, because I, I gave myself time, you know, cause I have to wait for the kids to do their thing. Um, I would just kind of wander around aimlessly and, you know, not, and not realize how crazy slow I was doing things. And, uh, when I first got the new Zelda, I was like so anxious that I got up early and I played for, uh, like 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And then I realized that that was the first day that I got to work on time, uh, in a few weeks. I was like, Oh, the reason I, you know, I was quick and I got things done and I was decisive was because I really wanted to play the game. <laughs> so, so for the rest of the week, that's what I did. I got up and I, you know, I didn't lounge around in bed. I didn't hit the snooze button. I got right out of bed. I got everything ready, got the kids going, did all that and was able to play for 20 or 30 minutes every morning. And I was on time every day this week. So <laughs> it was uh, so it's kind of an unconventional, uh, way to do it, but you know, maybe if there's something, uh, you know, games aren't the best example because it's very easy to lose time. Um, I've had to get good at it, especially, but, especially in a Zelda game. Well, at least that game, you know, you can, there's lots of save points, each encounters relatively short, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously there's infinite things you could do, um, but, um, but yeah, you know, games might not be the best option for everybody. Um, and definitely different games will be better than others. But, you know, if there's something that you really enjoy doing, you know, maybe 
cut yourself a time to do that in the morning. And then that'll kind of motivate you to start moving, you know, cause, uh, going to work isn't necessarily motivating. I mean, the fear of, you know, a bad reputation at work or whatever, uh, you know, that kind of fear, you know, maybe that's a motivator, but it's not a positive motivator. It's more, it's just as likely to make you dread it and drag your feet, you know, but if you can find something that you really like, um, you know, like give yourself a, you know, a specific time window for it. Uh, and maybe that, that'll be, a that'll be something that, that helps. It's kind of a, uh, a back, maybe a backwards approach to most people's morning routines, but it's working for me so far. <laughs> I think, I think what you hit on is something that I, I do as well, um, at night. Um, so at some point before I go to bed, I come back into my office and I write down what I'm going to get done the next day. What is the most important? Obviously the first thing is read. Every single morning, it's read, except for the mornings that I happen to be working at the YMCA because that's 4.30 in the morning. I got to be there. So I'm not getting up at 3.30 to read. Um, so that's the second thing once I get back. But I list everything. So I read and then I write like whatever article I'm working on, the idea that I have or the project, I write that project next. You know, I write in, I train the gym. I write in, you know, checking email, checking in on clients, programming. And then I write in, you know, podcast, podcast you know, podcast editing, whatever it all gets done right there the night before so that I know what my first tasks are the next day. And you like, it worked for you, Chez. You're like, you know what? I know what I want to do. I want to get up and play Zelda. So I have a goal. I have to get all this other stuff done so that I can do the thing I want to do. Um, so sort of in a roundabout way, kind of, kind of similar. Um, (laughs) just not as cool as playing Zelda. Um, (laughs) 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 um, yeah, I think uh, that's, you know, creating those habits, creating uh, those things uh, is really important to, to whatever you're, you're trying to do and whatever your endeavor is. Um, is there anything else sort of crazy that you've done uh, in, in fitness or, or life or, per, you know, it do, doesn't matter. Um, something you've done that, you know, where games or, or something out of your nerdiness has helped you get through that and, and achieve uh, what you were trying to achieve. Um, yeah, well, you know, that, um, uh, a project I've been working on for a while, uh, live like you game was all about how games can, uh, inspire and promote, um, uh, good living. So, uh, you know, basically that process of, uh, you know, trying to find all of like, basically dig through all the gaming I had ever done and trying to find the positive out of it, the positive spin on it. Um, you know, how in games, uh, I would play RPGs and I would grind for resources and, you know, I'll put in that time and I wouldn't complain and, uh, you know, I'd make progress that way. I can spin that to pointing to my real life where I, you know, there's certain things I need to get done that are, that are boring, but if I did it in a game, then I can do it in real life. Um, you know, and, you know, writing about those things and, you know, trying to find a way to share it with people, all of that, uh, you know, I realized for, um, you know, it became a thing that, uh, I was, like I wanted to write more and I wanted to do more, um, you know, with that project and it ended up becoming pretty big. Um, and that kind of dissected my, uh, you know, kind of my whole life and my whole thinking. And, um, you know, I think the, uh, you know, for, for other people, you know, finding something that you can teach people about or talk to people about or help people with, um, you know, that can be a, a really big way to improve your own life. Um, and, you know, that became one of the primary motivators for me was, you know, hey, I'm writing to help people, but, you know, this really applies to me. You know, I can apply that for myself. So, um, uh you know, that might be an interesting 
suggestion for other people is, you know, if you're looking to, you know, try to help yourself, find ways that you can help other people. And, um, and that might be, it might end up being a huge project, but that might be what you need to make changes in your own life too. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say that, what is it? I've heard the same before, but like, Something about teaching makes you smart. Like teaching reinforces the things that you know. Like you question yourself about whether you know something, but when you teach it, you realize, oh shit, I actually do know what I'm talking. Like I do understand this concept or this 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 subject or or, or whatever. Uh, you know, or in the form of fitness, you you teach someone how to do something. And you're like, oh, well, I do know what I'm doing. Yeah, um, it force it forces you to distill things and to you know, decide whether you, uh, really believe something or not. Yeah. Um, you might think you believe something and then you start to put it in words and realize, you know what? I don't really care about this thing or I don't think this is right. Yeah. Um, uh, Ken, anything on, on your, that you can think of? Um, one of the, <laughs> Take it as extreme if you want, but something I found that I always had a big problem with and some other people I've, I've experienced other people having a hard time with is, is letting things go. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in, (laughs) he's going to hate that I'm telling this story, but I, uh, I got into a fight with my best friend at his sister's wedding And he did something that I didn't really appreciate. So I talked to him about it. Like I got really upset, but we talked it out. He apologized a year later. We're talking about it again. And apparently I misremembered it because I completely blocked it out. Like I forgot, like forgiven, forgotten, done. He got so mad at me for not remembering why I was mad at him. To which I then told him, do you really want to remind me why I was so mad at you or do we just want to let it go? (laughs) And he's like, good point. (laughs) So but what taught me what one of the things I learned that taught me how much better you can feel if you let things go is skydiving. I went skydiving a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago, um, after a really horrible breakup. And in one of my hands, I had my favorite picture of the two of us and a letter I wrote her. And I crumpled it up and I had it all in my hand. And when we jumped out of the airplane, when we cleared the plane, I just let it go. And the physical act of letting it go when I got back down to the ground, that pain, that frustration, that anger that I had just wasn't there anymore. So it was it was I did a physical thing to reinforce this emotional thing. And it's really taught me the benefits of. You know, you kind of got to act like Teflon sometimes. Just got to let things go, let them slide right off you. Dude, that's that's so true. Uh, I think this day and age, it's very easy for us. Everyone uh, tends to take things very personally. Um, Some of that being social media. uh, And I think just the fact that you sort of lose the meaning behind words, mostly because – Sorry, I hate to tell most people we aren't that most people aren't very good at using the English language to get across their point. Uh, <laughs> but we, we just we well like we like we don't write very well as as a society. Um, part of that is probably due to the fact that we and I admit this. I think I only got better as a writer once I started reading more, and then I started to realize that like how you write a sentence with different punctuation can completely change uh, the emphasis and the meaning and like how that sentence comes across. Um, And when you don't have body language, you need that, that those, the pieces of grammar, you need that punctuation 
to be your body language. Um, because that's really what it's operating as. Um, so it's very easy to lose meaning in words when <laughs> you just jumble a bunch of things together and you don't know how to use, I don't know, commas, uh, when you don't know how to properly use T O O and T O my biggest pet peeve. Seriously, if you're comparing something guys or you're saying, I like that too, it's two O's. It's not that hard of a concept to get. <laughs> That's my biggest pet peeve on Facebook statuses is I'm like, guys, come on. We covered that in like eighth grade English. I know that your girlfriend broke up with you in eighth grade and you stopped caring about things, but that's one thing to care about. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's true. Like we don't we lose those meanings, and then I don't think we're able to really uh, communicate as well. Now in person, you can you can do that a bit better because you have those physical things, Ken. Like where I can move my hands before I tell you something, you can tell that something is about to come out of my mouth that you're not going to like. Um, and I think that those physical manifestations are very powerful and coming from my background as, as an actor, uh, yes. Uh, I E that's why hush was such a great episode of Buffy because there were no words, really no words. It was all, all body, um, all physical. Um, but I think that's a good point that you, you, you let it go. And once you let it go, how are you going to get it back? That letter, that picture were like, are, if you go searching for those things along a like ten mile, you know, square mile radius, then you know you probably got a problem. <laughs> like if I go hunting for this, I need serious help. But you let it go. You can't get those things back. You and that physical manifestation helped. And I think that's that's a very good point to bring up and a great story that you should totally write about. By the way, it's a really beautiful story. Um, oh, thank you. So you know. Punch up the emotion and, and hit me and hit me and hit me in the feels, man, with, with that. Um, but we're at we're at 45 minutes. And, and I know we started talking about how, uh, you know, sort of uh, our our love of all things nerd help us in life. And we talked about habits and we talked about, uh, you know, sort of uh, other extremes that we've done um, and how those those help. But uh, uh, I've enjoyed having you guys back on the show and hopefully we can get uh Mike and uh, BJ back on as well and do a huge giant nerd episode. But I'm going to tell you guys right now the DLC episode we're about to go into. You guys have to, you got to check it out. You got to download it. SideQuestFitness.com slash DLC. Just leave your email and I'll send it straight to you immediately. You get access to the super secret kids awesome tunnel that has all the DLC for absolutely free 99. That's right, zero dollars, all free. Uh, and you want to listen to this DLC episode because we're going to nerd out on all things Westworld. That's right. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So, guys, thank you again for coming on, and we'll uh, see you guys next month on Coach's Corner. And don't forget, sidequestfitness.com slash DLC so you can hear us nerd out on Westworld. Step up and you gotta get it fitness Post Rob at the moment and the quest is You gotta check it and wreck it You're breaking personal records And with the help of the guests You won't be guessing on the lessons That's a plus five fears Got a low key bamf right here You wanna meet them There's no better way to greet them Than to strike a boss pose Take a look into the mirror